Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lachlan. I have a special vlog today. It's special to me anyway, so I'm going to be rereading Akatar, but I'm going to be also listening to Graphic Audio, a movie in your mind. I am so freaking excited to listen to this audiobook. So first off, thank you so much Graphic Audio for sending me this because I am just like, I will be your number one hype queen. But if you're not familiar with Graphic Audio, they basically do dramatized, dramatized, I think that's how you say it, um, audiobooks. So it's full cast. It's not like your typical audiobooks on like Audible or Libby or anything like that. Like this is full cast of audio. I don't really do audiobooks. I struggle with retaining audio, but dramatized audiobooks, different, different thing. I listened to a sample of the audiobook and I'm just already obsessed with it. Like I'm so excited and I will be annotating my copy because um, I actually have like three or four copies of Akatar and this is the one that I originally read, like this copy, and I never annotated it. So I want to annotate it. So that'll be a really cool time. So let's start reading. I'm so excited. Graphic Audio presents A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, Part 1, performed by a full cast. The forest had become a labyrinth of snow and ice. I'd been monitoring the perimeters of the thicket for an hour, and my vantage point in the crook of a tree branch had turned useless. The gusting wind blew thick flurries to sweep away my tracks, but buried along. Okay, so I'm only on page six and just caught to the part where Feyre, by the way, there will be spoilers in this vlog. So she shoots the wolf or whatever with her arrow and the freaking audiobook, dude, it actually like you hear the wolf whimper. That was so sad. <laughs> oh my God. I was literally like, the arrow found its mark in his side, and I could have sworn the ground itself shuddered. Okay, so I'm on page 13, and I know Nesta is not painted as the nicest person in this book, but she's cracking me up in the audiobook. At one point, whenever her and Elaine are bickering, and the audiobook is like, <laughs> it just says, shut up. <laughs> and that's Nesta telling Elaine to shut up. Let's <laughs> just... Okay, I just got to the part where Tampon shows up <laughs> and the the audio is just so good. Surely you lie to save them. We didn't kill anything. Please. Please. Must have pushed Elaine farther behind her. Liar. You knew. You would have been more tempted to slaughter it had you known it was one of my kind. Tamlin sounds like a total tool and I'm to living us. for it. Truly. So I just finished chapter eight and I forgot about the part where Feyre tries to like steal, I think it's like a butter knife and she thinks she's being slick <laughs> and they know the whole time. Oh, I don't think I've updated you guys. So basically she, uh, Tamlin took her or whatever and now she's in the spring court and they're just like having dinners and stuff and she's walking through gardens and things like that. Um, I think Reese comes in around chapter 20. I'm just waiting on that, really. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm on chapter 11, and, um, the audiobook is still very good, very, very good, and loving it, but I just got to the part where she sees the puka thing that, like, takes form to, like, lure humans out so that they can eat them and it took form of her father and then Tamlin like shows up and he's like going somewhere that was me trying to uh quote the audible but yeah very I won't ever do that again anyway so now her and Tam Tam 
or having like a you know one on one bonding sesh. I remember the first time I read this, I totally liked Tamlin. <laughs> and then Reese shows up and it's like Who's that? Okay, page one oh four and one oh five, whenever Tamlin comes in after killing the bog and he's like dripping with blood, like standing there, his clothes are shredded. Look, I don't blame my past self for being intrigued by this man because that scene is really good, okay? It's a really good scene, especially the audio just like emphasizes like only on page 107. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> can we speed up a little bit? Just a little bit, please. <laughs> You've been going on hunts. But you really don't have any interest in hunting. And cast me a sidelong glance. No wonder you two never catch anything. <laughs> so freaking funny, Tamlin. Everything in Prithian was different, as Tamlin had claimed, thanks to this blight. Well, I didn't want to be caught up in some brutal war or revolution. I doubted I'd survive very long. Girl, same. I would not survive. I would literally be like a Claire better, okay? Like things would not be good for me. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. On page 113, is talking about how like she doesn't know how to read or write. And I'm just thinking about Akamath. And then I'm thinking, well damn, Tamlin had the opportunity. This is just another reason to hate Tamlin, but like Tamlin had the opportunity to teach her. Like he knew. He knew she didn't know how to read. He didn't care. He was like, here's this big fat library and go have fun even though you can't use any of it. Okay, so page 117, he does offer to help her to write the letters. But, you know what, I don't care, I still hate him. He could have tried to teach her how to read. That would have been great, but he didn't do that. He was just trying to um, hand her a fish instead of teach her how to fish. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, look. I know Lucian gets a lot of shit because he didn't really have a backbone when it came to tampon. But... Look. He gave Feyre the, like, the directions on how to find a cereal. So, he's, you know, MVP for that, okay? Like, gotta hand it to him. He, he, did, he did that. He delivered what was needed. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. Just because of the part with the cereal. Dude, seriously, I know I probably sound like a broken record. But the audiobook is so cool. Like, the sound of the serial is just, like, it's epic. Like, I feel like I'm in that forest with her. Like, it's it's a little bit creepy. All I'm gonna say. Before Tamlin tore into the creature, the Naga holding me released his grip. And disemboweled the Naga in one deep, long swipe. Did y'all hear that? That is a very detailed. <laughs> That's a really uh, detailed audiobook. That's good. That scene is good. So I'm on page 135. Um, one thing I thought was funny was <laughs> at one point she says, My bowels turned watery. And I know this is like a whole thing. Everyone hates that she says that in this book because she says it like more than once, obviously. But. The first time I read this, it never annoyed me, but hearing it, I was like, oh, oh, that was like, that was a different story. Hearing that her bowels turned watery, I was just like, okay, that happened. <laughs> Terrifying. The audio for chapter 17 is literally traumatic. I, I need you to hear this. It's that Faye that got his wings cut off. Y'all, this is, this is traumatic. He's summer court by the cauldron. My, my wings. The fairies gloss.
glossy black eyes were wide, staring at nothing. She took my wings. Again, that nameless she who haunted their lives. If she wasn't willing to... Like, he came in and in the background of the audio, you just like hear him crying. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, this whole scene, I remember it being like really sad even without that audio, but with that audio, like, this is truly traumatizing, and I'm in, I feel like I'm gonna have nightmares of this poor Faye with his wings cut off, like, And then the vomit. Oh, that was. Oh, you can hear it. Oh my god, it's insane. This is a lot. It's just a lot. Shimmering tufts of dandelion fluff drifted by, and the floor of the clearing was carpeted with swaying crocuses and snowdrops and bluebells. Out of the corner of my eye, Chamlin was no more than a glittering golden figure. Even his mask, odd and foreign. Seem to fit into the okay, so I keep having to pause the audio to talk to you guys. I'm on chapter 20. You know what chapter 20 means? It's the right, or what is it called? God damn it. It's Kalan Mai, the Fire Knight. Okay, we know what happens here. I've been looking for you. Okay, so I turned off the light. I'm setting the mood. We're gonna meet Resand. I'm just like very excited. <laughs> Before I could draw them or hit the grass, they were strong hands, warm and broad. There you are. I've been looking for you. A voice I'd never heard, but I kept my eyes on the three fairies, bracing myself for flight. Thank you for finding her for me. Enjoy the right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so his voice is like very happy. Okay, so I totally read that chapter, chapter 21, in the dark, but, okay, so I love his voice, and you know what it reminds me of? Jacob Black. He sounds like Jacob Black, and I'm, like, not mad about it. He's not, I mean, it's not, like, exactly like him, but, like, it's definitely, like, a good voice, in my opinion. I'm, it's definitely way better than, like, Tamlin's. Resand. Yes. So I'm on page 195 and the audiobook is very like slow. If it weren't for annotating then I would probably like not be able to like sit and read along with the book. Just a slower pace than what I'm used to. It's okay though because it's forcing me to read slower and kind of like savor it because I don't know when the next time I will reread this book will be. So I just finished part one of the audiobook, which ends at chapter, the end of chapter 23, page 212. I will see you guys in part two. Hello, so it's been a couple weeks since I first started this vlog. Um, we left off after chapter 23, so I'm about to dive back into chapter 24 with the audiobook. I'm excited to finish my reread of this book. Okay, so chapter 25 is like the vibes of the winter, I mean the summer solstice, and it's amazing. I love, it's like renaissance festival if you've ever been to like a renaissance festival, um, that's just like the vibe that I get and I am obsessed. Like I love it so much, like the scenery and the atmosphere and I just wish I was physically there. Maybe not with Tamlin, but like, you know what I mean. Okay, I had to get me a coffee because Tamlin and Lucian were putting me asleep. But then Reese shows up and now I'm awake, but it's not because the coffee, it's because of Reese. 
So, um, I forgot. So, Resand actually taught Tamlin, like, how to fight and shit. I totally forgot about that. Because he says, who do you think taught your beloved Tamlin the finer aspects of swords and females? That was our, our high king of Prithian, baby. Like, yes. Bow down. Oh, yeah. So, chapter 26 is when Feyre gives Reese, um... Her fake name. She says that she's Claire Better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, poor Claire. Yeah, so um, I could cry right now. So page 257, 258. Elaine is telling Feyre that Nesta went for her. Nesta tried to go get Feyre. Like, I feel like... Which, this is something that I remembered. But, like, reading it again, just like... But it's, it just gives me chills because, like, Nesta, the whole time, she was not fooled, okay? Like, she was not glamored. She knew what was going on. She tried to get Nesta. I mean, she tried to get Feyre. And, like, Elaine the whole time is like, oh, Nesta's not speaking. Oh, she's being, like, so weird and all this stuff. And, like, Feyre's all judging Nesta and all this stuff. It's like, oh, she's the real one, though. Like... She's the real one. Nesta is the besta, and I miss her, and I just want to read Cordis Over Flames. For people that do not like Nesta, I urge you to read page 264 and 265 of Akatar. okay? Just read those pages and tell me if you don't feel differently about Nesta, because, like, I just... I'm... Just like speechless, how like people could read this and still dislike her. She's the strongest bitch. She put up such like a wall in her emotions that Tanlin couldn't even get past it. Please, like let me just go read Quarters Over Flames because don't get me wrong, I love Feyre, but Nesta is the best, uh, okay? Like, <laughs> I love her. So. Okay, so I just finished chapter 34. And uh, it's basically whenever she goes to like save Tamlin and then she makes a deal with Amarantha and so she has to complete these three tasks and blah 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 and she gets her ass beat. Anyway, so the audiobook, <laughs> whenever Feyre is getting beat up, um, you can literally hear her bones crunching. So that's fun. So I remember the first time I read this, I like enjoyed it a lot. I think I gave it like five stars the first time. Um, this time around, like I am definitely just kind of like, obviously because I don't like Tamlin, I am not like, haven't been obsessed with my reread of this because it's like, it's all about Tamlin. <laughs> and it's all about Feyre loving Tamlin and Tamlin loving Feyre and like, whatever so i'm just kind of like mm, can we get it over with already <laughs> we can get to a quarter miss and fury please that's my only thing about this and like hello so i realized i never closed out this vlog um i did end up finishing a quarter of thorns and roses my reread of it um i ended up giving it my first time I, the first time i read this i gave it five stars this time i'm giving it four just because i obviously didn't enjoy like Tamlin in the book um I'm not like trying to throw shade to people who like Tamlin but like I just really don't like him so yeah the ending where like <laughs> Rhysand basically imprints on Feyre I remember the first time I read that I was just like did he just imprint on her like okay Twilight yeah it was good four stars and um I'll pick up Akamath soon Love the audiobook again. If you're not like someone who likes audiobooks because you get distracted, the graphic audio one honestly kept my attention so well just because it's basically a full cast. It's like full acting with sound effects and everything. So even at parts when I were I would like be not paying attention and I would come back and be like, oh wait, I'm not listening. Like I haven't been paying attention. I would know still what's going on just because of the sound effects and everything. Um, plus, I mean, it helps that I've read the book before, but still, like, the sound effects, everything. Um, only con is that I couldn't speed it up 
Um, and I was thinking about it and I was like, if I were to like speed up the audiobook, it would probably mess up all these sound effects. You know, like, I don't know how that works. So I think it's meant to be listened at one speed. It's not meant to be listened to at like three times speed. I give the audiobook five stars. Like, so good. If you made it this far, you can leave a rose emoji as well as a headphone emoji because I was listening um, to the audiobook. And thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys later in my next video.